This presentation will be on the theory of separation methods. By the end of this presentation, you should be able to give a basic description of the difference between a mixture of chemicals and chemicals involved in a chemical reaction. You should be aware that there are lots of scientific methods that can separate chemicals from each other. You should be able to describe how filtration works and also be able to describe how chromatography works. Now the first important point to note is that there is a big difference between two chemicals that have reacted together and a mixture of two chemicals. Firstly, during a chemical reaction, two chemicals are added together. If they react, the particles from each chemical forms bonds and join together. This is the formation of a new chemical. However, if the two chemicals are just mixing together, they do not react together. No bonds are formed, the particles do not join together, and thus you still have the two original chemicals just all mixed up. So, because you still have the original chemicals, and they have not bonded together, we can still separate them again. Now there are lots of methods that can be used depending on what you want to separate. Now this is just a short list from the many methods that are available. You should come across most of these in your school career, but in this presentation we're just going to focus on two, chromatography and filtration. Firstly, filtration. Now this is a fairly easy concept to understand. Think of cooking pasta for a meal. You add the pasta to the water to boil it, but when it's finished, you are left with a mixture of pasta and water, which needs separating. To do this, you use a sieve. The small holes in the sieve are big enough for the water to pass through, but not large enough to let the pasta through. Hence, the pasta becomes separated from the water. Filtration in the lab works by the same principle, but on a much smaller scale. It's used to separate solids from liquids. The solid particles are much larger than the liquid particles. So when you put them through filter paper, the liquids can easily pass through. The solid particles, however, get stuck. You have now separated the solids from the liquids. Chromatography is a trickier concept. It's a way of separating numerous chemicals based on their physical properties. If we take a bottle of ink, this black ink is actually made of lots of different coloured chemicals mixed together. We can separate these chemicals using chromatography. To do this, we take some filter paper and put a small blob of the ink onto it. The filter paper is then put into a liquid. Now the type of liquid depends on the chemicals you're trying to separate. If you leave this set up for a little while, the liquid slowly rises up the filter paper. 
Now here is the interesting bit. Each of the colored chemicals in the ink is attracted to the liquid in varying amounts. If one of the chemicals really likes the liquid, is really attracted to the liquid, this liquid will carry it up almost to the top of the paper. If, however, the chemical was not at all attracted to the liquid, it would hardly move at all. Now, because there are several coloured chemicals in the black ink, there will be a range of chemicals, each attracted to liquid in different amounts. Interestingly, if you use a different liquid, the chemicals might be attracted more or less to this liquid than to the previous one. This could potentially cause the colour chemicals to come out in completely the opposite order. So hopefully, you are now able to give a basic description of the difference between a mixture of chemicals and chemicals involved in a chemical reaction. You should be aware that there are lots of scientific methods that can separate chemicals from each other. You should be able to give a basic description of how filtration works. And hopefully you will be able to describe how chromatography works. Now don't forget to fill in your worksheet so that I know you've watched this presentation.